So what's going on boss buddies? Now I thought it'd be good to start doing, um, at the end of each month, do like a wrap up as the, the top fives that I found each month. So I'll be back in a second with my top five discoveries for November. So welcome back, I'm Scott, the Luxury Fragrance Boss, and every month now, from now on, I'm gonna be doing a roundup of the month and the best five discoveries that I had all throughout the, obviously I'm trying, um, sorry, all throughout each month. Obviously I'm trying a different fragrance pretty much every day, so I thought it'd be great to sort of do a wrap up at the end of each month, as I said, um, with my top five discoveries. So the top five fragrances that I've tried that month. Um, so on to my top five for November. Now, uh, I actually have six fragrances here because there were six absolute stunners here, but who the hell does a top six? So I'm still gonna call it a top five um, with one honorable mention. My honorable mention for this one is going to be The Soft Lawn by Imaginary Authors. Um, I wore this one just over a week ago um, to play tennis in and it didn't really get a fair chance. You may have seen me, I posted it on Instagram as my scent of the day um, in front of the tennis court because I thought it'd be perfect to come play tennis in. Um, however, it only got really a couple of hours wear because I was sweating so much in the 90 degree heat playing tennis here in the Cayman Islands that, it did, that I pretty much sweat out the whole fragrance. So I gave it another wearing over this past weekend so I could give it a real fair chance and it absolutely stunned me. I really, really fell in love with this fragrance. It was, um, oh, sorry, my wife's just arrived home, I can see out the window. Um, but yeah, this one I found it absolutely stunning. I really did fall in love with it. Now the idea of this one, it's called the Soft Lawn, named after a tennis court, which is why I posted a picture of it with a tennis court, despite it being a, a hard court rather than a grass court. Um, but this one's got some interesting notes in. Funny enough, this one doesn't have any woody notes in, but to me this does smell quite woody. The idea of this one is it's based on the smell of tennis balls. Now, personally, I love the smell of new tennis balls when you crack open a new tin. Um, I can see why some people wouldn't really like that. And this isn't exactly like a new tennis ball smell. It is similar, but it's much, much nicer. I mean, you've got a really, I think, what is a very, very classy smelling fragrance here. The longevity of this one is fantastic as well. And the projection was pretty good. I was, like I say, I fell in love with this one and I could smell this one all throughout the day. The projection was good, sort of two, three feet. Even into the sort of the late hours of the evening, I could still smell this one really, really strongly. And I, th I know this is definitely one that I do want to add to my collection. And at the price that they charge really for their 50 ml bottles, I think it's around $135. Um, it, I mean, it's definitely an affordable one to be adding to my collection. So yeah, that's definitely one I wanna stick in there. So that's my honorable mention. Now moving into my top five. Now in fifth place is a brand new UK, um, a brand new UK niche brand. Um, and that's Stories by Eliza Grace. Now this is, num this is Stories number two. Um, you may have seen that I tried both of, uh, both of her fragrances that are out at the moment um, over this sort of past couple of weeks. Um, which kindly enough she sent out to me out here in the Cayman Islands um, because I, I was originally she was supposed to send it to somebody in the UK who was coming out here, a friend of my brother's, uh, sorry, a brother of my friend's, um, but it, she didn't receive the shipment in time. So she sent them directly to me out here, which I'm very, very thankful for. So thank you so much to Tonya, um, at Stories by Eliza Grace. Um, or Eliza Grace. Um, but yeah, this one was a really, really beautiful fragrance. I found, I mean, it's um, just trying to remember the notes in it. Uh, let me find it. Um, so in this one, you've got a Popanax, Tonka bean, and patchouli, um, and you've got some amber and musk in this one. This is definitely something that's sort of right up my alleyway um, when it comes to sort of the, like, the types of scents I really like to wear. I mean, this one, it's also available in a variety of sizes. It's only available in the UK at the moment, but definitely visit their website, stories at elizagrace.com, uh, I think. I'll leave a link um, below for the, for the company so you can go straight to their website though and check out the, the different prices and check out how to order from there. But uh, yeah, I mean, they do deliver worldwide, I've, I've noticed on their website. Um, but yeah, this one is just sort of a nice sort of woody. There's some, I think there's some cedar and stuff like that in there as well. But I mean, this one is just such a beautiful fragrance and beautiful balanced fragrance. I did do a full review of stories one and two. If you wanna check that out as well, um, they were posted on my channel sometime in sort of the last sort of 10 days. So definitely check those out. Um, you'll find it in my listings. Um, but yeah, I mean, number five, definitely stories number two um, by stories by Eliza Grace. So that's my number five. 
So moving into the top four, um, it's really sort of hard to sort of call these out in any particular order. I'm going to try and sort of break them down though into four, three, two, one. So with number four, I'm going to go with Atelier Cologne Cedar Atlas. Now, when I wore this one, I wasn't sort of sure whether I liked it or not in the beginning. Um, when I first went like with the opening and stuff like that. However, as the day went on, I decided to wear this to the gym and I really fell in love with this one. This one is a very, very classy smelling fragrance. It's woody, but it is, um, I mean, obviously there's cedar in there, but there's sort of a few other ingredients in there that make it sort of very, um, that make it very, very unique. There's a note in here as well that I noticed that I don't normally like in other fragrances, but in this one, for some reason, I really enjoy it in this one. It just adds an edge to this. I think it's just the way that the fragrance is blended and it just makes it such an incredible fragrance to smell. Um, I actually got a compliment on this as well from one of my gym training partners, um, which, was, which was quite nice as well, obviously a guy. Um, but yeah, I mean, this one was a really, really nice one. I really enjoyed this one. The longevity again of this one, fantastic. And the projection was pretty good as well. I could smell this one all throughout the evening, um, even after wearing it for a sort of heavy leg session during the day. So, I mean, definitely a top fragrance. And um, again, at the price point that they charge, I think it's $125 or $130 for a 100 ml bottle for the Atelier clones. That's a fantastic price and that's a fantastic fragrance that you get for that money. I mean, I found with all the Atelier clones and also the Histoire de Parfums, um, their ranges for the money that you're paying, they are just absolutely outstanding fragrances. So um, in number four spot, Atelier Cologne's Cedar, uh, uh, sorry, Cedar Atlas. Right, into the top three. Now, it's gonna be very, very, very hard um, to pick between the three that I've got left. Uh, I'm gonna to have to say, though, one of the best vanillas that I've tried so far this year, probably the best vanilla I've tried ever, and that is Carna Barcelona's Amber Del Sur. Um, obviously, this is supposed to be an amber-based fragrance, but the blend with the vanilla in this one just makes this one absolutely stunning. Again, this is another one that I reviewed not that long ago, and I, I just absolutely love this one. This, I mean, out of all the vanillas I've tried, and I've tried some amazing vanillas this uh, this year, and this one is definitely one that sort of really stood out as one of the best. Uh, pff, God, it's so good. I mean, you've got uh, notes in here that so you don't really sort of find in any other sort of vanilla fragrances as well. You've got Italian bergamot in the top. How often do you really see sort of citrus notes mixed in with vanilla? Not too often. In the heart, you've got water jasmine, Indonesian patchouli, Australian sandalwood, and accord amber. In the base, you've got myrrh, Spanish sisters, Venezuelan tonka bean, and then the Madagascan vanilla absolute, which just makes this just an absolutely stunning fragrance, which I cannot get enough of. And I cannot recommend trying this enough for those of you that do love vanilla fragrances, even those of you that do love the amber fragrances. So definitely one to check out um, and get on your radar if you're into those types of fragrances. And this one, again, is a perfect one for the winter, just with those sort of lovely, beautiful, warm notes. So. Um, as well, the longevity and projection, again, I mean, I don't recommend anything that's not got good longevity or good performance overall. And this one, fantastic longevity, goes all day long. Something that I've noticed with a lot of the Carna Barcelona's, their fa performance is fantastic. Um, projection, you've got decent projection on this one. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a vanilla fragrance, so it's a, it can be a little bit softer, and same with the amber in it as well. It tends to be a little bit softer, but this one is quite strong for a vanilla or amber fragrance. Um, this one throws about, so I'd say three feet for most of the time that you're gonna be wearing it. Um, but yeah, another fantastic performing fragrance. So Carna Barcelona's Amber Del Sur is in number three spot. Now in number two, I'm gonna to go to the house of uh, Bodicea the uh, Victorious, and that's gonna be um, Imperial. When I tried this one, it's such a beautiful, classy smelling fragrance again. I mean, this, this one just, I mean, it just, it, exudes power really this is the kind of thing that you'd expect to go and smell somewhere in a very very sort of powerful lawyer's office or a boardroom that's the kind of feeling or vibe that i really get with bodicea's um imperial i really did enjoy wearing this one it's one that just sat sat on the skin it's very very easy to like i i the kind of vibe that i got from this one as well um as i said in my full review was it reminds me a tiny bit of a ventus not 
in the way that it smells, but in the vibe that it gives off. It gives off like a, a um, like, like I say, a, a powerful vibe. Some of you would expect to sort of be an alpha or sort of up in a high position um, that definitely wants sort of to be noticed a little bit. And that's the vibe that this one gives off. And like I say, it is, a, it is just a stunning fragrance. It's a little bit softer than Aventus. It's not quite as aggressive, I would say. So you've not got that sort of massive or monstrous sort of projection, but it has got some decent projection on it. Um, you're probably looking at around sort of three feet when it comes down to projection. Um, but when it comes to longevity, 10 hours plus easily. So, I mean, this one's definitely get you all the way through the day and it got me through most of my uh, my gym workout as well. So in number two spot, I have to give it to Bodicea, the Victorious Imperial. Now moving into my number one. Now my number one that I've discovered um, for November comes down to one of my favorite houses. Now they've become one of my favorite houses since I discovered them or since I first tried Nasamato's um, Black Afghano. And my number one spot this month has to go to Baronda. I mean, being a Scotch lover as well, this is right up my alley. And this is one of the best booziest fragrances that I've discovered. The only one that beats this one is of course my favorite, which is Straight to Heaven Extreme, um, which you'll notice, which I gave in my, first, my top five uh, winter fragrances. Um, not so long ago, which was my boozy, my boozy fragrances. So again, they'll be coming. There's a, that's part of a series. So I'll be doing top five winter fragrances. Uh, and the next one's going to be woody fragrances or ooze. I haven't quite decided yet. And then there's also going to be tobaccos in there as well. And then I'm going to throw in a gourmand as well. So definitely keep your eye out for those. So as back into Nasimato's Baronda, I mean, like I say, I'm a Scotch lover. This one is just perfect for Scotch lovers and for those who love boozy fragrances. You've got that beautiful sort of aged single malt, like a 25, 30 year old sort of single malt smell just smooth something that's been aged in like a sweeter barrel like maybe a sherry or a rum cask something like that just an absolutely stunning smell um, again with Nasamato something that never fails to disappoint me is the performance of these I mean this one is a slightly softer fragrance than say black afghano um, but this one it's definitely got good projection still sort of two to three feet and the longevity I found this one just goes on all day as well so the other thing I found with the Nasamato fragrances is they tend to get a little bit stronger throughout the day as well. They tend to sort of really grow on you and they, I find them very sort of mesmerizing and sort of even hypnotizing. They, you wear them and you don't sort of take much notice to begin with, but then they really start to grow on you and you, before you know it, you're absolutely addicted to them. So I mean, this is definitely another one that I really want to add to my, um, my fragrance collection. I've already got black Afghano. As soon as I smelt that, well, as soon as I wore that, by the end of the day, I knew I had, I had to have that one. So, um, and the same goes with Baronda, and I'm probably gonna add quite a lot of the ones that I've tried from Nasimato. I haven't tried Pardon yet, I've still got that one to go, so let's see whether that makes it into the top five for December. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed Absinthe as well, as I do love my boozy notes. So that's my top five for November. Please let me know the top five that you've discovered, if you've discovered any new fragrances. I know plenty of you out there are out there sort of smelling different things every day and collecting. So please do let me know. Um, please like, comment, and subscribe below. If you do enjoy my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Um, it does mean the world to me. Um, when I get up to 500 subscribers, I'm looking forward to doing like a video. Um, we're gonna let you into a little bit about my life and sort of what my other hobbies are and things like that. My, also my favorite sort of five fragrances in my collection. I'm gonna take you through my collection and things like that. Um, which I should enjoy doing. Um, other than that, please follow me on Instagram. You can find me at Luxury Fragrance Boss. That way you can keep up to date with any of my scent of the day, um, any new videos I've got coming out, anything else like that. Um, other than that, stay smelling fantastic. Oh, and hit that notification bell as well. Uh, that way you'll never miss a video. Um, stay smelling fantastic. I'll see you very, uh, see you very soon in my next video. And thank you very much for watching.